Okie dokie. So today we're going to go ahead and solve an AP Physics C mechanics problem from 2010. It's the second one. Awesome. So I encourage you to go to the AP website, try this problem yourself, and then check back in on the video. We will also go through the scoring rubric for this problem. Okay, so after you've tried it yourself, let's go ahead and do it together. So you've got good old bowling ball, mass of what, 6 kilograms, released from rust. I'm going to put, it's sometimes nice to put all these things on our picture. So VI is 0, 4 meters long, 30 degree angle. The ball rolls over on the roof without slipping. Awesome. Anytime you know rolls without slipping, this means there is a force of static friction making it move and rotate. Um, because if there's no friction, then something's just going to slide on down. Friction will make it rotate, provide the torque to make it rotate. Okay, we know rotational inertia is 2 fifths mr squared. Okay, so on the figure below, draw and label all the forces, not components, acting on the ball at the points of their application. Okay. So we know we have gravity. Gravity always acts from the center of mass, so I'll go ahead and draw that on there. So we have Fg. Normal force is a force from the surface, so I'll go ahead and draw that pushing up. And then we'll have force of friction, which is tangent to the surface of the ball. Cool. We have all our good old forces. So for B, let's go ahead. We're going to find the force of friction acting on the ball as it rolls along the roof. Cool. Okay. One, sorry, going back to A. So let's go ahead and go through our rubric for that. So you just get one point for each force, um, that the name of the force is correct and the point of application is correct. If, so it's one point times three. If you drew FGX and FGY on it, you would have one point subtracted from your total. So again, never for graded free body diagram, do not draw the components, just draw the forces themselves. But when you're solving, it is a great idea to draw the components. Okay, so now we want to find the force of friction acting on the ball, ball as it rolls along the roof. Okay, if you need to draw anything other than what you have shown in part A to assist in your solution, use the space below. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I know that I am going to need to split, so I will say, let's go ahead and just redraw our picture. So we have essentially Fn, we have Ff, and we have Fg. Okay, so we know, we usually call for these problems, we call the direction of the ramp the x direction. And I'll say downwards is positive, and we call perpendicular to a ramp y direction. So FF is just x direction, FN is y direction, FG, let's split that puppy into the x and y components. So that is our angle theta. So we have FGY is going to be what? MG cosine of theta, and FGX is going to be MG sine of theta. Okie dokie. Let's go ahead and put it all in. So we will have, let's go ahead and set up F net X first. Um, so we're going to have F net X equal to, so again, this is translational, we'll call it translational uh, motion, which we'll use F net equals MA for that. So because it is moving in a translational linear way, we are going to use F net equals MA. So F net X equals what? FGX minus what other forces? And oh, I should have drawn my easier free body diagram to read. So I essentially now, when I'm solving this problem, I think of we have Fn, we have Fgy, we have Ff, and we have Fgx. So again, I'm only looking at the x direction. So we have Fgx minus Ff. Okay, F net x is Ma, Fgx is going to be Mg sine of theta, and Ff, we do not know that. Let's leave a blank. Okay, let's go ahead and look at, so that is our linear equation of motion. Now we're going to have to deal with, it's also rotating, so we're going to have to deal with the rotational analog of, of F net equals MA. So that is, so that is going to be our T net equals I alpha. So again, that is the rotational analog of F net equals MA. So for my torque equation, let's see what I got right there. I have T net equals I alpha. So I'm going to go ahead and start with that. Net torque, what provides the force to make it rotate? So, well, gravity is acting from the center of it. That's not going to make it rotate. Normal force is pushing up on the surface. If I imagine a bike wheel and you're pushing up on it, that doesn't make it rotate. It's friction that provides that torque. So the torque is going to be due to FF times R. So we have what? FF times R. I is 2 fifths MR squared. We're going to, in the end, want all linear or all angular quantities. So we know the relationship between angular and linear acceleration is A equals R times alpha. Again, that's assuming alpha is in radians per second squared, which we'll use that. Um, so let's go ahead and substitute that in. Cool. Let's simplify. 
Um, and R cancels out there. And then we have FFR equals two-fifths MRA. That means another R can cancel out. So we essentially have FF equals two-fifths MA. So fun. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug this FF, and that's just what I'm so used to doing in these problems, into here. So we have MA equals MG sine of theta minus two-fifths MA. Okay, let's go ahead and solve this. It might be helpful to have A for the future. Let's just go ahead and solve this for A. So I'm going to add two-fifths MA to both sides. So we'll have MA plus two-fifths MA equals MG sine of theta. So one whole MA, which is like five-fifths MA plus two-fifths MA, that is seven-fifths MA equals MG sine of theta. M cancels out, and A will be five-sevenths G sine of theta. Okay, I'm so used to solving for acceleration for these types of problems, which maybe that was a little silly to do, but it looks like now i got to go back and find force of friction. So let's go ahead and plug that back into our force of friction. We found that to be 2 fifths MA. So that is 2 fifths MA is what? 2 fifths mass times what? 5 sevenths G sine of theta. Well, that cancels out, so we're left with 2 sevenths. M G sine of theta. Let's go ahead and plug in. This problem deals with numbers. I like just plugging in the numbers at the end. Let's go ahead and do that now. So 2 7 times 6. I use G as 10 so I can do it faster in my head. And let's plug in what? Sine of 30. Cool. Sine of 30 is one half. That's fun. Um, when I plugged it all in, I got 8.57 newtons. Just in case I need it later, I'm going to solve for acceleration. So 10 times what? Sine of 30. And I go. I got 3.57 meters per second squared to be the acceleration. So I'll just keep that there in case I need it later. Okay, let's go ahead and go through our rubric now for this problem. Okay, this part of the problem is worth four points. So you get one point for correctly setting up F net X, so that's being FGX minus FF. You get one point for using the correct component of FGX, MG sine of theta. You get another point for correctly setting up the rotational analog to F net equals MA. So that's essentially using T net equals I alpha and also plugging in that friction provides a torque. So that's going to be one point. And your last point is just from your answer of 8.57. Awesome. So that's four points. So we're up to seven points so far you could have earned. And if you're getting around seven points, that's probably around a four AP score. Okay. So there's a lot of different ways to do that. So we want to find the speed of the center of the mass ball when it reaches the bottom edge of the roof. So this ball starts, it starts right here. And then we want to find the speed right here. Okay, anything things times that you're changing, changing heights, changing speeds, I love using conservation of energy. So let's go ahead and look at. So we have at the very top, it has all gravitational potential energy, and it's rolling with slipping. So we have Ke rotational, and we have Ke translational. So we're going to have both of those. Let's go ahead and plug in our equations. So UG is going to be MGH, Ke rotational, is one half i omega squared ke translational is one half mv squared okay so let's see i we know that is let's go ahead and plug in things we know so i is going to be two fifths mr squared in the end we want the linear speed so let's put omega into a linear speed so we're going to use v equals r omega for that so we'll have what one half two fifths mr squared omega is going to be v over r squared plus what? One half mv squared? Cool. So we'll have mgh. That simplifies a little. Then we'll have what? One fifth m r squared v squared over r squared. Oh, the r's cancel out. This is so fun. Plus one half mv squared. So now there's m in every single term. I'm just going to cancel out m since it's in every single term. So we have gh equals one fifth v squared plus one half v squared. Okay. We have two v squared. So Let's choose a common denominator. 10 looks like a good one. So we will essentially have 2 tenths v squared plus 1, no, 5 tenths v squared. So that is going to be 7 tenths v squared. So v will be square root of 10 sevenths g h. Cool. Let's go ahead and plug in some numbers. So g I used to be 10. Let's see. The height, okay, how, what height does it go through? So it's that distance right there. Oh, this is so fun. Um, think about how you could do this. But the height is just going to be 4 sine of 30 degrees if we set up our Sokotoa. So that's just going to be 2 meters. Gosh, that's fun. OK, 
Okay, so let's put that in times two. Awesome. So when I put that in my calculator, I get 5.34 meters per second. Awesome. Let's go ahead and go through the scoring rubric real quick. So you get one point for using conservation of energy. You get one point for correctly putting MGH, K rotational, and K translational and their equations. So it's one point for all that. And then you get one point for your answer. Just as a side note, I'm not going to go through it all, but you can also, to solve this problem, you can use the constant acceleration equations. So watch, VI is fixed from rest. We want to find VF. What's acceleration on the incline? Oh, we found that to be 3.57. That's so fun. Um, cool. So we can put that in 3.57 meters per second squared, and it goes a linear distance of 4 meters in the direction of its acceleration. Um, and for this one, you would get, if you're doing it that way, you would get one point for the acceleration. You would get one point for using the correct constant acceleration equation, which would be the Vf squared, Vi squared plus 2a delta x. And then, um, and plugging in Vi is zero, and then you would get one point for your answer. So that's just another way to do it. Okie dokie, let's go ahead and look at our last part. So we have, okay, we have the wagon at the bottom. So let's go ahead and draw our good old wagon at the bottom. Uh, mass of the wagon is 12 kilograms, and it flies off um, kind of like this at a 30 degree angle. Okay, so we know it flies off at 5.34 meters per second. Let's go ahead and look at that to the side. And then this angle is going to be 30 degrees. Okay, it flies off, hits that wagon, and then they go off together in the horizontal direction. Where we'll have the ball in it. I should draw my ball better. That was a lousy ball. I just drew it as a box. Um, okay, so that's them together. Okay, where the box is 12 kilograms and the ball is, what is the ball? I should have written down six kilograms. Okay, cool. So anytime things collide, I think of conservational momentum is going to be a great way to do it. Conservational momentum is going to be your friend for a problem like this. Oops, sorry. It's moving around. Okie dokie. So let's put that on. So again, conservation momentum. Is this problem just taking place in the x direction or the y direction? It looks like it's just taking place in the x direction. So we're only going to need Essentially, the, the y velocity is kind of like impacted by the ground, so it's not going to move in the y direction at all. Let's find the x velocity. We're going to need to use that. So if we set up our good old triangle. Vx is going to be what? 5.34 cosine of 30 degrees, which I got 4.62 meters per second when I plug that in. So again, it's essentially, it is moving this way, but we only care about the x velocity of 4.62 meters per second, because that's the only thing that's going to matter. So let's set up our momentum equation. We have P initial equals P final. So it's what? Mass of the ball, velocity of the ball, plus mass of wagon, velocity of wagon equals mass of both afterwards times velocity of both. Now we can plug in some sub fun numbers. So mass of the ball is 6. Velocity of the ball is 4.62 in the x direction. Wagon is 12 times. It's not initially moving. That makes our life easier. Zero. Afterwards, they are together. So that's going to be 18 times V volt. And I did some fun old math, and I got V volt to be 1.03 meters per second. Okay, so here's the rubric. We have one point for the velocity to be in the x direction of 4.62 that you're using that one. One point that you're getting a correct conservation momentum statement. You did not need to include the initial wagon staff in there just because it has no momentum initially, so you're call either way. And then you get one point for um, using the masses of both of them afterwards. So that part's two points. The last point for this AP thing is one point for correct units on B, C, and D. So we use the correct units in all of them, so we get one more point. Awesome. Thanks so much for watching. That was fun to check.